Well, hello guys. That didn't work. I didn't get the right camera on. We're all over the place today. I am sorry. And I realize that I am not the face you're used to over here. And I want to say that I'm trying to come on to support the community. I'm going to try and continue live streaming over here once a week. I will try to do our normal time slot, which would have been Tuesdays around 11 uh, my time. That's Pacific, so around 1 uh, Central. And that way there is some connection back to this community that's so valuable and so needed for so many people. And you guys, help me out here. If you need anything, I, I can't replace or be someone I'm not, right? Um, I can be me <laughs> and I can bring you what I have to share and um, help you find links back to stuff that Angie said and help keep a connection with her and with this community going. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, hello to everyone and thanks for joining me. And I realize this is hard and it is not uh, going to feel normal or real or regular or right for a long, long, long time, if ever. So we're just going to get going. I want to talk about grief. And here's the thing. <laughs> I spent all yesterday, so I didn't live stream, trying to find someone to come on and talk with me, like a therapist or someone. And no one was able or willing to do it that I could find. I'm sure there are plenty of people that would be. I just didn't have the resources at the time. So what we're going to do here instead is talk about our grief and what we're feeling and, and what a community in grief feels like and what we can do to support and help each other through this. And I think Angie would have loved that approach, even though her science brain would have said, bring on the experts, <laughs> right? So um, I um, asked a friend who has been in our community a long time that is a friend of mine to just come up with a bunch of quotes for me. And so I'm going to read those. I'm going to talk a little bit about grief and I'm going to talk to you guys. So keep it active in there. Let's talk about what's going on. So let me go in and say hi to you guys this morning. Um, you need this. Good, good, good. My eyes are super blurry right now because I have not slept in days. So I am like leaning into this. Ah, okay. For real. I can't even, I'm going to open the chat on my phone because I can see better there. <laughs> That's crazy. It's crazy what it does, right? The lack of sleep, the crying, and the shock of it all kind of messes the whole system up. And we need the self-care flowing, all of us, um, for real. So are you guys taking care of yourself? When you're having waves of grief from this, what are you doing about it? I can tell you what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I went out every day I've been out in nature because for me, that is the most healing place I can find. I go out, I took a I took the fastest two mile walk I think I've ever taken in my life. And then I felt her presence. I felt the community's presence. I felt more connected and grounded to what my mission is here and way better. Okay. Still all the awful feelings, but then there was, there was the back and forth of both. And then yesterday I went out and played with animals and outside and um, kind of didn't do a whole lot of peopling except for touching base with those contacting me. And that was helpful. Today, I'm jumping back in, but I'm going to go exercise. So what are you guys doing to help yourself when you feel the waves of grief? How has this affected you in your own personal life? For me, it's done two things. It has made me feel like, well, I can't really cuss, <laughs> right? But yeah, I have a mouth on me. Um, all that, right? Anger, it's made me feel this is so unjust. Like I feel so much for, for her, for her, not just for her family and everyone else, but for her, she had this drive and this mission and this, just her whole life was wrapped up in all the things she was doing and all the, all the places she put her energy. Right. And it's just snuffed out and I'm pissed off. Right. So there's that feeling. And there's also this feeling of great loss in my own life because she was my friend. Okay. We talk daily. Sometimes we talked weekly all with all the time. And we had hours long conversations when we would talk both about business and personal. We trusted each other. And it was a unique relationship for me because I'm not a super truster. She wasn't a super, you know, like with people. So it was, it was something I took care of. I tended it with care. Okay. And so now with that gone, it, I feel the whole and that I have to just grieve. So what the heck is that grief thing? What are you supposed to do with it? Um, I'm going to look at some of you guys and stop talking about me um, now that I can read. So um, go back to the beginning here. Um, oddly thankful to be here. You know, I had so many people, Kathleen, uh, check in with me yesterday asking when the live was going to happen. I just couldn't. I was choked. I couldn't come on and do this. So 
put on my big girl pants today and here we are. And it is going to help all of us. Um, and it is helping me to do it. I am going to have to keep it brief because I am trying to take on clients today as well. Um, and I start in a half an hour with someone. So um, I'm going to keep this a short, sweet live stream and try and get some of your stuff read. Um, sat in the car, Marco Embarco sat in the car this morning, crying my eyes out in gratitude for Angie and overall sadness for her sudden loss. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, it does hurt you guys. I'm going to let your comments roll. And this isn't because I'm ignoring your comments at all. It's because of time. Um, unless there is something super pertaining to grief itself so that the verbal stuff when people are rewatching is there. Um, great grief to be a part of. A lot of strength here makes grief bearable. Mm, so community community connection. We are a community of people who have had our connections with others broken because of the toxic people in our life. We're a community of people who are vulnerable to things like lack of trust, like loss. We are a group of people who have had abandonment in our life and fear of that happening. And then when it does, and then not on purpose, right? It It's a lot. And to be able to lean on each other, I was saying to someone leaning in my, in my coaching group yesterday, everyone wanted to pour out to me, but I was there to do my thing, right? And help them. And they're like, no, Lise, you need to listen. And they gave me, they said, everything Angie was to the people she worked with, you are to us. And of course, then I'm crying and I'm like, you guys stop. And they're like, no, you need to lean on us right now. And also coach us, whatever, whatever you need, but you need to know we're here. And that, who does that, right? So I said, you know what I'm getting an image of is okay. So when you think of leaning on someone, you think of someone standing strong and someone and you're leaning on them and you're like, oh my gosh, this is hard. And they're going, yes, I've got you. And I'm leaning and I'm leaning. But actually in a community, leaning does this. And you come together like at a point in the heart, in the head, in the spirit to hold each other up and to go through this together and to be um, as disconnected, as connected, and as as messy as you need to be in order to get through something. And I am sorry, I've been talking to the wrong camera because I'm used to talking to the other camera. So now I'll look at you. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, my, and I am appreciating all the love pouring in. Angie's family is appreciating all the love pouring in. It is the magnitude of it has made such an impression. And left such love in the hearts of her family. You guys, the magnitude of all of this, of all of this outpouring of seeing how important she was as a person is really, really helping the family. So thank you and keep it coming. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Oh, I'm struggling with the chat. I am so sorry. I will be much better with chat as weeks go on. I am uh, just bear with me in the next couple days, next couple streams. Okay. Um, having both of us do it when we were here together was a heck of a lot more simple, even though that was still kind of, let's see. I'm going to go, let me go to the quotes that someone pulled up for me. If I'm going to start here with what I was reading last night, I was like, what is grief? How can I talk about this? And here's something that I thought was interesting. So we think of grief. It feels very personal. You feel very isolated in your grief. You feel, I mean, a lot of us, we feel alone and we feel like we've lost something so huge that, that no one can understand, even though we know others are feeling it too, Like, right? But there is something called universal grief. And I think that is what we are experiencing, which as empaths and as empathic people, sensitive people, connected people, we're going to feel hugely, okay? Because you're not only feeling your own sadness, you're not only feeling your own, whatever it is you're feeling personally, you're feeling everybody else's. It's a real thing. The energy of this is bigger than all of us, okay? Here's the thing about Miss Angie she'd be like, you guys, you got to shine, right? We got to, we, yes, of course, grieve me, <laughs> right? Of course, of course. And also as a community, make this something bigger, make this stronger, make my light shine, all of that. Okay. So that's where I'm coming to. But I think this universal grief feeling, we have to remember that as empathic people, we pick up other people's vibe. Okay, we pick up their energy and we carry it. And then as a, a survivors, 
we carry it even more. Many of us have codependent traits or traits of thinking we should fix it for other people. Let's just put it that way. And we don't know what to do. We think we need to do something to get through this. We think we need to offer. We need to do for others. We need to. And yeah, I got to say, doing for others is helping me magnanimously. However, if I didn't have her in my life, I wouldn't be helping others. So there's that paradox going on there where it's like, okay, it's what I'm supposed to do. And yes, I get everyone wants to help others. There are so many avenues in which you can do that. And if that helps you, go for it. Um, I'm going to let all the what happened, if you guys can explain what happened to the people who aren't uh, clued in to or tuned into what's been going on, um, I'm going to let one of the mods kind of uh, let everybody know just what happened maybe briefly uh, in, in um, and then they can go back and watch uh, the last couple lives, uh, the couple videos that are posted um, just so I don't break this flow because I'm trying to stay in this topic with our short time frame here. So... I think it's important when knowing that, knowing that having, being empathic, carrying other people's stuff, perhaps being codependent, carrying it even more, perhaps being a people pleaser, carrying it even more, you know, like because of that, because of the nature of this community, that we learn how to allow this to flow, okay? Holding the grief and doing something with it is not always going to allow the flow. It's the feeling of it. It's also the feeling of what else is possible, even in spite of this. Does that make sense? It's the feeling for, I have just literally been laying there feeling so heavy and so tight and so anxious. Like, I don't think I've eaten well since Sunday, right? I don't think like, it's just bad. Okay. So, so I just keep telling myself what else is possible from this? What else is possible? That's not to detract from anybody's sadness, loss, any of it. What it's to say is, what is the door that is opening that will allow things to flow forward? I don't know. Okay. It's not, a, it's not a question for me to answer, but that energy of that feels lighter. Angie was always talking about manifesting. She was always talking about, um, you know, law of attraction types of things or, or things that, uh, that you take a dark situation and you find a path through it. Right. That was something that she was very, um, <clears throat> adamant and, and talked about a lot. She also talked about missing grief because of it. So this is where I'm trying to like be careful with this, but there is possibility in this that is bigger than we know. And what we need, I feel what I need to do and I, you can follow me or not is understand that some of what I'm feeling is other people's and try and let that flow because I don't want to hold you guys down in grief. I don't want to hold you here anchored, especially as someone representing this company, anchored in the grief. I want you to process it. I want you to feel it. I want you to go through it. And I want you to have somewhere to lean and somewhere to talk and someone that understands. But I don't want to hold you here in it. I don't want to hold her family here in it by, does that make sense? So if I seem more like vivacious than maybe I ought to be right now, that's what that is. That is me saying, I honor your grief. I hand it back to you for you to process and I will handle my own. And together we got this. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> let me, let me read what my friend Jana sent me this morning. I asked her for just some quotes on grief, if she could find some for me, just so I could give some inspiration and some direction, because I'm not talking about this from a psychological standpoint. I'm talking about it from a very real, honest, open place that we are all experiencing right now. And I myself am personally experiencing right there with you. Okay. So I'm in this with you. I'm here as your coach. I'm here as your friend and I'm here as whatever you need. Okay. Um, so, okay. Um, John has found one from J.R.R. Tolkien. I will not say I do not weep for not all tears are an evil, right? We got to cry. We got to let this flow. Let it flow out your eyes. Let the eye waters come and go as they need. And don't judge them. Don't put, don't say, I hate this. Don't say anything like that. Please just allow it because through that, there's a bit of catharsis. There's a bit of release and cleansing that comes. Okay. Um, here's another one. 
from Dostoevsky, the darker the night, the brighter the stars, the deeper the grief, the closer is God. Whatever that means for you, and I, this is not a religious anything, let's just say the closer is all and everything, so that we are universal in our speech here, and kind of paraphrasing that, but it is true. Look how deep this community's grief is, and how people are, like, the things people are saying, it's, it's so close to this beautiful light that, you know, and it isn't through our darkness that it is so obvious how bright that light was, right? <clears throat> yeah. Um, let's see. Elizabeth Gilbert. Deep grief sometimes is almost like a specific location, a coordinate on a map of time. When you, oh, this one's gonna make me cry, okay. When you are standing at that forest of sorrow, you cannot imagine what you could ever find your way to be, oh, I'm sorry, let me read, let me start this over because this is too good and I'm too weepy, okay. Deep grief sometimes is almost like a specific location, a coordinate on a map of time. When you are standing at that forest of sorrow, you cannot imagine that you could ever find your way to a better place. But if someone can assure you that they themselves have stood in that same place and now have moved on, sometimes this will bring hope. I could just end there. <laughs> that is brilliant. Thank you, Jonna, for finding that because seriously, that is a beautiful thing and it is so true. Um, and then here's one, Arthur Golden. She loved this one. Grief is a most peculiar thing. We are so helpless in the face of it. It's like the window that will simply open of its own accord. The room grows cold and we can do nothing but shiver. But it opens a little less each time and a little less. And one day we wonder what has become of it. I don't know about you guys. Have you all been shivery? I've been shivery cold for days. So I'm doing shivering right now. That's why I'm like hunched over. Okay. <laughs> um. <sighs> Um, Jonna herself says everything feels harder in grief. It really does, you guys. Take time for self-care. Take time to know you're going through something. Take time to know this community is going through something. Her family's going through something. We all are. Okay, so everything's going to feel harder and everything's going to feel overwhelming. And there's going to be this rush to, you know, want to help, want to do something. Sometimes we just got to sit with it. And we've got to know we're not alone. And, um, you know, like I can't say how clean my floors are right now, right? <laughs> Do something like that to just busy yourself, whatever it is that works for you uh, to help you through it. And Maya Angelou, I think we'll end with this quote. <clears throat> A great soul serves everyone all the time. Let me repeat that. A great soul serves everyone all the time. A great soul never dies. Bring us together again. I'm sorry. It brings us together again and again. I'm going to repeat that as one phrase because Maya Angelou, thank you for that quote. Could there be anything more perfect? And thank you, Jonna, for finding that one. <clears throat> A great soul, <coughs> excuse me, one more time. A great soul serves everyone all the time. A great soul never dies. It brings us together again and again. Okay. Okay. That was a good one. And um, I'm sorry, I'm not reading chat as much as I'd like to. I'm, I've got like five more minutes here. Um, I will be here for you guys. I will be over on my channel. I'm going to ask you guys, if you feel good with it, come subscribe over there as well on my channel. You can find it. Oh gosh, maybe Mod Squad can pop it in here. Thank you so, so much, Green Spud Trades, all of the um, <clears throat> Super Chats top chats or any of the donations that come into this channel are going to the family. They are continuing the business and it all is fed back to the business. So um, the business of helping you, right? The business of getting this info out there. And when I say the business, it sounds cold, but you know what I mean? It, queen being itself so that it can continue to serve because it does have operational things going on, right? So <clears throat> um, anyway, <coughs> excuse me. I think I'm at my max of talking. Ooh, so keep watching here. Angie's face will be here. Okay. 
her her son and daughter are <clears throat> continuing. Her children are continuing to edit her into shorts, her videos, continuing to edit old videos into other videos. And we'll keep this moving, this platform moving, because her voice spoke to so many, right? I will continue with live streaming on here, and I will continue with new content on my channel. My channel is my name. Okay, I'm going to spell it for you. L-I-S-E-C-O-L-U-C-C-I. Lise Colucci, Narcissistic Abuse Recovery, I believe is the name of the channel. If you just put my name, it will come up. Please subscribe over there for um, other other new content, like Kurt, like actively new stuff. And then keep watching here as well, um, just so you have both places. I have been, there we go, it's in the chat. And it, we'll try to get it into the description of the video as well for those who are not watching this live. Um, it's just a way for the for everything to be um, flowing the way it always has been. I've been over there for years, so um, if you haven't seen it, come watch it. I may not be your, I mean, I'm not Angie, right? So I can do what I can do from where I stand, and I will do my best. If you need anything as far as new content or whatever, hit me up over there, and I'll I'll get it for you. And I will let whoever is managing her videos know so they can find the content and get some little tidbits and pop it up over here for you. Does that make sense? The community can help us by helping keeping this moving, helping keeping this the information out there and keeping it flowing, okay? Um, <clears throat> okay, let's see. Yes, and I understand if people need to take a break, totally do it, whatever you need, okay? Just... Just be there. If if you ever need to talk, I am available to chat. Just, you know, like send me an email if you want, if you need to, if you need a break, but you still need a connection. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I think I'm going to end here with that. I want you guys to take care of yourself during this grieving process, during this time. Please find some self-care, whatever that means for you. Some examples could simply be eat anyway. Okay get up and shower anyway, that type of thing. Keep their family, her family in your hearts and um, give them some space to process this. And um, I'm happy to uh, field questions and stuff if you, if you have them. Um, there will be information forthcoming as it comes, okay? And it, we will make public what, what, what we can, right? So um, I'm trying to help them on that side and you guys on this side. So let's get this, let's just keep moving. Okay. What is the email I can connect to, Lise? My email is coachlisec, C-O-A-C-H-L-I-S-E-C -E at gmail.com if you need it. Okay. Um, and if you go over to my channel, it's all there. It's, it's easier to find over there. That's why I'm deferring you. I'm referring you to both places. Sorry about the ding. I don't know how to turn that off. If anyone knows how to turn that off on two Apple devices, that'd be great. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Um, lots of ums today. This is, this is kind of all I got for right now. I'm, I'm going to go take care of me for five minutes and then I'm going to go talk to some people who are needing some help. So you guys take care. I will be back next week. If not sooner, uh, um, I will be over on my channel just with videos um, about narcissists and the things they do. And I would love to have one day a week minimally where a video is simply about shining and having light and bringing forth some positivity, even though we've had this stuff going on. So I'm going to kind of shift things around over there as well toward that. So um, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for tuning in. I know this is hard. I realize that there is no replacement and I realize that, um, you know, I, all of it, I don't even know what else to say. Okay. Um, love you guys and take care. See ya. Bye-bye.